Who is a defender of hell? Who out there are the defenders of hell? That's the big question right now. It should be obvious that there are a lot of defenders of this system, this hell that we are in right now. Don't do anything about it. Just keep meditating. In a war, someone can still be meditative and calm and not have a war affect them. Do you see the absurdity of how that sounds? People are getting their legs blown off and you're remaining calm, just completely meditative, just zoned the fuck out completely. My goodness, that sounds exactly like a defender of hell. Don't worry about all of these horrendous things happening. Just focus on yourself and your own personal problems or your own personal existence. Don't care about anything else. It's just an individual journey. You're the only thing that matters. No one else matters at all. Just stay alone. Stay cornered and isolated and meditate. Constantly, constantly meditate. I think it's becoming more and more obvious and clear who the defenders of hell are. It's almost as if they're pointing themselves out, isn't it? That's what I'm getting at. We are at war. And in case anyone didn't get the symbol, when I first started doing the black screens, that was indicative of what's going to happen. It's going to eventually go dark. You're going to have to learn to actually, literally see in the dark for those who stay behind. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, the ones that I called on to prep. An actual prep. And when I mentioned that it was going to be at least two years necessary while I'm on the walk, that's just the walk part. I want to make this clear. When one does prep, one should over prep because then she, she is in the equation and that walk that she has to do, that journey, that's going to take some time as well. And if you're going to be a lighthouse, you're going to need supplies, not just for yourself to survive for that duration of time, but for those who are going to be on that journey with her defending themselves and her. So each one acting as a lighthouse in the hopes that they reach you, obviously, then you walk with them. So it's about gathering more people along the way to create a better defense system. This is an actual war coming. It's going to go dark. That's what all the symbolism has been about that I've been showing in that regard as well. And I'm making that clear. I'm pointing that out. There's nothing cryptic about that. That's the symbol. I'm reflecting it back now. See the hindsight of it. This is how vision works. It works ahead of time. So there's only one actual goal to really have in this place because we are prisoners of war. And when you are a POW or prisoner of war, you want to get out of jail. That's why goal is an anagram for jail. But instead, the devil and the devil's defenders want you to keep chasing the goals of its jail. Keep chasing the circle of your own tail, of its tails. I've went into this in previous works many times before, and it's obvious why it wants you to keep chasing after its goals, because it keeps you locked down in its system. That should be very obvious by now for anyone who's followed the works on here for some years now and worked on themselves and neutralized those goals. Again, I maintain this is the real meaning of neutrality. You're neutralizing the prison system of the devil. It's not about neutralizing yourself and your heart. And look at the defenders of evil, the defenders of hell. They keep saying that neutrality is like meditation, to be zoned out, zoned out and doing nothing. 
nothing about the situation that you're in, which is a prison system, a cancer system. You're neutralizing the prison, which is the mind. That's the point. Neutralize your mind and come down into your heart. See with your heart. I am making myself crystal clear. That's what neutrality is all about and only about. Don't put words in my mouth. Anyone putting words in my mouth is a defender of hell. I am of the heart and only the heart. The kingdom of the heart. The end. And yes, my previous talk the tells of the devil that was shocking to many but those who are asleep you need to be shocked it's like a first responder someone's laying on the ground their heart has stopped what are you going to do you're going to need to shock it back into action so that it starts beating again and the big reason why The macrocosmic reason why is because the earth, which is the heart, is on its last heartbeat right now. This is the last beat. This is it. And everyone's still asleep. I need to shock everyone. And I'm not saying that some of you aren't awake or getting awake. That's not what I'm saying. It's a generality again. I know that the real get this. I just, it seems like I need to explain myself because there's so many defenders of hell. But that was the point of that shock as well, to shock you awake. And there's going to be more shocks because even if you're slightly awake, it's sort of like getting up in the morning. You're rubbing the crud out of your eyes, still yawning a bit. Oh man, it's morning, it's so early. You're still not really alert, right? That's just a fact. Now times that by a billion. And that's what this wake up call is like. That's what being asleep for an eternity has been like. That's what's happened. So I'm seeing from only my heart, only my heart, being the first responder And yes, some of you have put it together. The first shall be the last. And the last shall be the first. Which is right now in this moment. I'm the first responder. Truly waking up the asleep. The ones who have been sleeping that are still real. And want to be of the heart. And some of you, it's like you're in the morning phase. Just wiping the crud from your eyes. And that's good. That's a damn good thing. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here with me, for being that much awake. And it's going to be time to really be awake because, yeah, we've been asleep in death system, hence awake, leaving a lot of death in our own paths as well. That's just the fact. It's not something to feel immensely guilty about nonstop. That's not the point. There is so much to be done and so little time to do it in. And yes, the only goal, the only goal that is necessary right now to have is to get out of this prison. And from the comments, I see that many of you are all in for the heart. It's beautiful, but there are also, as you can see, a lot of defenders of hell a lot and the fact of the matter the truth is that they outnumber us greatly and i do mean greatly it's like a 10,000 to 1 situation or worse so that's where we are with all of this That's the goal, and that's the big question. Who are the defenders of hell? We need to be on high alert all the time. And time is not our ally. That should be very obvious. This is the death star right now. It's the dead sun that's been imprisoned. Imp-prisoned. It's in the tell. It's in the word. An imp, a devil, captured all of us, captured the heart, 
split us up, divided us. That's why we're spread all over the world, as I mentioned before. Why are we spread so far apart, all of us real hearts? That's the reason. That's the design of its sadistic system and its sick and twisted nature, the way it does things. It laughs at how it set us up in this way and trying to find each other. And especially imagine finding each other in the dark, no less, for what's to come. So I'm paying attention as well to everyone's comments. It very much matters. A lot of your questions are on point and they do matter. I'm paying attention and I'm going to answer as sufficiently and accurately and completely truthfully as I possibly can with the words that I'm using to be as clear as possible. I'm not hiding anything, nothing whatsoever. I'm not being cryptic. You notice the defenders of hell, they keep saying I'm being cryptic. I am not. I am being crystal clear. I am saying exactly what is going to come, what is going to happen. I'm giving a very close timeline. I cannot, for the reasons I stated, give the exact moment that my walk begins. That moment is sacred. I am not allowed to give away that moment. But I have told everyone what needs to be prepared for, and really the start of that preparation should have been done yesterday or way before Years ago, really, ideally, but that's not the case for a lot of people. That's just the fact. And the other fact of the matter is that nothing is going to grow next summer. So those who have seeds saved, they're not going to be any good. The earth isn't going to grow anything for you next spring, next summer. It's not going to come out of the ground. So that should give you a very good indication of the timeline and how little of it that we have left to do our preparation for what's to come. And it's an immensity. It is apocalyptic because that's the point. It is biblical in size, in scope. Beyond, beyond anyone's imagination of what can be conjured in your imagination. You are going to see things that will just utterly blow you away. Completely away. You can't conceptualize it at the moment. When you see these things, you will not even know how to hold it all in what you are seeing. It is going to be that immense. And that's just during the first few years with the actual walk. And then when things go dark, my goodness, my goodness, you have to. Those who are going to be lighthouses that are willing to prep on the western side of Canada and the U.S., as I mentioned. You, you have a greater responsibility than I can put into words. You are going to be so important, so integral to, to the outcome of all of this. Please know that many of you have stated that you're all in for the heart, and some of you have said that you're willing to be lighthouses and that you're doing the prep or have prepped already. Thank you to the real, to the ones who are actually going to do this. And more will be explained in the time to come exactly, and I mean precisely and exactly what this means. But for the time being... As I said, just like the preppers have shown, what do you need? Lots of water, lots of food, weapons, 
guns, bow and arrow, knives, anything to end a zombie. And I mean a literal zombie. The Hollywood depiction of a zombie. That's exactly what we are going to be contending with in the dark. I'm going to be at a different point, unable to contend with that situation myself because, well, I have my own immensity to contend with. That's the fact. And it is, it's an immensity. That's all I can say. A lot of you have asked, what about those of us who live in other countries? What are we supposed to do? And I'm going to ask you, how important is leaving hell? Is it important enough to have a plane ticket prepaid? Like pay for it right now to get to the western side of either the United States or Canada. Somewhere where you'll be able to stay for a little while. I noticed there was one commenter that said that they were willing to be a bum right until the moment of the walk. That's what I'm talking about. That's being real. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's taking things seriously. If that person walks their walk, then yeah, you're taking this seriously, which you should. Wait it out a month and then come on the walk. Yeah, you know this is real. It's about getting out of hell. You'll fly from Europe or South America or whatever country. You'll do it beforehand. You'll have your plane ticket ready or you'll you'll do it ahead of time. You might know some people in North America. Tell them you need a change. Tell them there's something big happening. And you need to stay there. Stay with them for a little while. And then you'll be gone. Because you'll be on the walk. So yeah... Obviously, those who live in other countries, you're not going to be doing any prepping here in North America unless you know some people here on the west side and that might be willing to do prepping and you could stay with them and endure the years to come. Stay hunkered down or bunkered, whatever word you want to use, because that's the fact. You're not going to be going out into the public You're not going to be going to a concert. All of that's going to be done. Every last bit of it. It's over. There is no future here, as I said before. And that's the other point I'm going to mention about being all in, especially for the prepper side. There is nothing to save for. There's no retirement to save for. All in means all in. Every last bit of what you have to spend, spend it. And of course, the defenders of hell will say, Oh, he's trying to destroy people's lives. Look, he wants to take away your retirement savings. (laughs) My goodness, it should be so, so obvious what is happening right now. We are at the end And as I said, just look at how many defenders of hell have come out just on the comment section of this channel. Just trying to deflect you in every way possible if you're one of the real hearts. Just trying to confuse you. Calling me every name under the sun, telling me I'm lost, etc., etc. Just saying the worst. It should be so obvious. Look, they just, I called them out, the lurkers that they were, and now here they are, just like that. Call them out, bam! All of a sudden, they're just out in droves. Bam! Just like that. Holy shit, there they are. Just hundreds of them 
just flooding the channel all of a sudden. You shouldn't be surprised with all your subscribers. Oh, but never comments in this number ever before and never the amount just degrading everything that I'm bringing forward right now. Just knocking it down completely. It should be so obvious. They are the defenders of hell. They are its frontline pawns. That's a good way to look at it. They're the cannon fodder. Go out there and make a fuss, make a mess. Yeah, clusterfuck, as one commenter correctly pointed out. So all these years is about hiding everything, giving us no information. And now it's about giving way too damn much, trying to swim through an ocean of garbage information. Just bombard them. Give them way too much to look at. They'll never figure it all out. It's literally a clusterfuck. That's exactly right. Very good, the person that pointed that out. So I wanted to bring up that as well. And the the need to prepare for an unfathomable immensity just proportions that just can't even be imagined. The amount of importance of what needs to be done can't be contextualized in language. It just simply can't. Because after this, it's just death. A sea of death. I want to get that across as clear as possible. What's at stake? What's on the line? It's far too important to cover in allegories and symbols. I'm laying it out completely clearly and truthfully. This is it. There's no future here. There's no reason to be saving up for something that's not going to be there. This is the time to be all in. And yes, on the prepper side, that's exactly what I mean by that. This isn't the storm of the century. This is the storm of an eternity. That's what's going to be smacking everyone just as hard as possible. So again, to those who are in different countries, as you said, and that's your concern, and it's a valid concern, but how important is getting out of hell and taking your opportunity of an eternity to go on the actual walk and carry your own weight, carry your own cross, That's what you're going to have to do. There's another question I'll get to in regards to that. And it's an important one. And several of you have asked it sometimes more than once in the same comment section. I, I see you. I hear you. Your concern is valid. But it doesn't matter what country you're in. You could be in Russia, somewhere in Asia, Australia, anywhere in South America. It, it doesn't matter if you're somewhere across the ocean and you need to fly on a plane to get here? Well, you've been given a sight line ahead of time. I know what I would do if I was receiving this message after an immense search for truth, after decades of searching and what is to come. And it's so obvious. It's in the tells everywhere. It's just in the atmosphere. It's seen everywhere on what is happening to the earth. It's on E. Look at the resource depletion. There's hardly anything left. Just research into what's happening with fresh water even. That's a big tell just in and of itself. 
it's being depleted to the point where there's hardly any left anymore. All these things are indications. That's what I'm getting at. That's what I've always been saying. And there's been people around the world saying the same thing and being very concerned. And that's because they're real hearts. They're really actually concerned. Genuinely. Of course, if you're a heart, you should be concerned. How can you not? Only the defenders of hell are unconcerned and calling this shithole a place to set down roots forever. And there is no forever in this idea. It's on E. And when the tank is on E, there's no time left. You're not going to be traveling into the future very far. See how far you get on an empty gas tank. Start up your vehicle and start driving. See how far you get. You might not even make it out of the town that you live in. Well, that's exactly what this earth ship is. It's on E. It's not getting very far. Time is up. Actually, it's up. We have so little of it. I've given you the general timeline. Nothing's going to grow next summer. Tap shut off. Anyone thinking about starting a community as if, oh, we're just going to stay in these meat monkey suits and start a community, and then we're just going to grow our own food. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, I it's a nice idea. I'm not degrading or mocking or taking down that idea. I think it's a beautiful idea. I love the idea of community and the people involved in doing that are genuine hearts. I feel that, but that's not where we are. We are in hell's system. That's the point and that's the problem. It's not about setting up a community and staying within its vision. We need to leave. We're a prisoner of war. We don't set up another community in hell. We have to go. And now is the time. Not this very minute. Now is the time to prepare. That's what I mean by that. Obviously, I've given the general outline of the time. And trust me, when I'm on my walk... The whole world is going to know. You've been given advance sight to what is to come. So if you're in Europe or somewhere overseas, if you're in Africa, you're going to have to find your way to North America. And if the planes are grounded, which they shouldn't be right away, I'll let you know that. There should still be a little bit of time when my first announcement gets made. And that's why I'm saying you should buy a ticket right now if you're really serious. And it doesn't matter anywhere on the West. And then you can hitchhike to where I'm going to be on the highway the rest of the way. You're going to have to be really damn serious about this. It's not going to be you're doing some walk in Africa at the same time. That's not how this works. You're going to have to walk with me. I am going to a specific destination. And this is a specific train, if you will, to be on. And there's only a limited amount of time that this train is traveling. And then once the planes are grounded, again, if you're zenned out, and meditating and thinking that, oh, I, I still have some time. I, I got to think it over. There's not going to be any time. Those planes are going to be grounded for good. And then at best, maybe, maybe you're going to have to try to find some ship at that point. Who knows? I would literally get in a dinghy and do an impossible journey across the Atlantic if I had to, to get over here. Holy shit. I missed the planes. They're now all grounded because I was debating whether I should go on this walk, which is an opportunity of an eternity. And now it's too late to take a plane because 
they realize, oh my goodness, there's no more fuel to fuel the planes. So they're not going to be flying anymore because the resources have been tapped out. The tap is shut off. Not only shut off, but it's tapped out anyways. But yeah, it's going to be shut off, legitimately shut off. And then you're going to be there twiddling your thumbs, debating whether you should have come or not. Missing the opportunity of an eternity just because you are across the ocean. If you need to borrow money from someone to get that ticket, do it. Do whatever you have to. If you have to empty your savings account, there's nothing to save for. Nothing. Get the ticket. Fly on the plane. Get over here. If you know someone, even talk to the real on this channel. If there are real hearts, real hearts will be able to reach real hearts. You should be communicating with one another. I'm going to tell you that now. This system is about keeping us separated. Why aren't you communicating with each other too? If you're a real heart, reach out to real hearts. Come on! Why aren't you doing that? Reach out to each other! You don't always have to just listen to to me speak. Say, look, I'm in Australia or I'm in Russia, or I'm in Brazil, or wherever. Are you a real heart? I want to do this walk. I'm not going to waste this opportunity. Do you have a place I can stay? A backyard I can set up a tent even. Doesn't even matter. Just until this walk happens, and then I'm going on the walk. Reach out to each other. And be willing to let others know if they're real hearts. Yes, I have a place you can stay. I'm letting you know that. But so many of you are scared to even leave your email. And I have to wonder, are you a defender of hell? Reach out to other hearts. Create a fake email if you have to, if you're worried about... Whatever email you have right now. Talk on the phone. I mean, talk about the things that you've learned through the years. Find each other. This is what I meant. This is what I've always meant. This system wants to keep us apart. And I'm trying to put us together. Do you see? That's how you heal. You heal the divide. Come on, please see it with your heart. I'm begging you. This is how healing happens. You don't heal by keeping the cut separated. You don't do that. You bring it back together. That's what healing is. That's how you heal the heart. You bring the hearts back together. Come on, see it. I'm begging you. Holy shit. And you all want to stay divided and alone. And you listen to the defenders of hell. Say it's all just an individual journey. You have to do it by yourself. Why the fuck would you listen to someone like that? They want to keep you in a torture chamber. Just literally isolated in the dark. That's someone who suggests that. That's what they would do to you. And I'm telling you to reach out to each other, heart to heart, have heart to heart. You must have heard that before. How few of those heart to hearts has anyone had with anyone? How few? And I mean, if you've had a real heart to heart, say someone who cared, say it was a family member and they actually had a heart to heart with you. Do you remember, you can go back into it, the amount of impact that it had on you. It had to have. I know for myself, I have. 
I grew up in the same way as everyone. I was a kid. I was a child once. And the few times that someone that I looked up to had a heart to heart with me, you think that ever left me? That has stayed with me right to this moment right now. And there's been so few of those heart to heart, so few of them. I can count them on my one hand. Just on one hand, I can count them. So that's what I'm telling everyone. I'm suggesting, please, I'm begging. That's really what I'm doing. I'm begging. Find each other. Have conversations. If Calling on the phone is expensive. Get a phone card or make the calls online on the internet. There's resources to use. You can have these video chats. There's going to have to be a level of trust from hearts to hearts. There's going to have to be. That's the other problem with this hell system is that it says trust no one. You can't trust anyone. It's another divide and conquer tactic. Can't you see it? Please, please see it. There's going to have to be some trust that happens between hearts. And as hearts, you're going to have to feel it out. So if you do find each other and you're having conversations... And one heart is talking to another and you feel, ooh, actually, you know, I really don't feel comfortable with this conversation. Well, then maybe you are talking to an unreal and then you could just end it. That's fine. You're going to have to use your own discretion in that regard. And I'm telling you right now, if you remain cut off from every other heart, and are unwilling to put your trust out there at all, and I mean at all, then you're going to remain isolated. I mean, there's there's got to be a level of trust, obviously, towards me. I know that I've built that over the years, and it has taken years. I've poured, as I said, my heart and my intensity into these works I have, and now my real intensity is starting to be shown. You're starting to hear, as I said, just a drop of it, just the most minuscule amount of passion and intensity that I have within me, and it's going to be necessary. Every last bit of it is going to be needed for what I need to do. And I'm being completely open and vulnerable and honest in saying that. But for what's to come, it's going to be necessary to trust in one another, the hearts, the real hearts, because that is the fact. A lot of us are in places that are far away from where this opportunity has been set up, and it's not my choice to keep it so tight in this way i'm not i'm not going to be walking around the entire world that's not the setup of this and there's just no time to do that this is a short window very narrow that's why it's called a narrow gate that is exactly the reason And if you miss the opportunity, it's gone. It's going to be done. And then, yeah, everything's going to go dark. And you do not want to be alone in the dark. My goodness. You do not want to be one of the mark takers either. I'm going to get into that in in future talks and what that's going to mean and and the scenarios behind it and and other things as well that are to come there is so much but the most important salient points i need to get across as clear as possible and be a little repetitive that which is important is worth repeating not just twice or 
three times, but a lot. I might say the same thing a thousand times. That's how important this is. So it's it's also no time to say, oh, I'm sick of this. I've already heard him say this specific thing. Don't be sick of it. Just please understand how important it is. And I hope, and I hope I continue to keep shocking more of you real hearts awake a little bit more. You know, keep taking the crud out of your morning eyes. You're still yawning a little bit. Haven't uh, a lot of you, you know, just to use uh, an analogy, had your had your coffee. You're not coffeeed up yet, so to speak. I'm not suggesting drink coffee. That's not what I'm saying. I just know a lot of people require that to feel energized at all in the morning or able to do much of anything without being a complete grump. So very much, especially those who have found this channel ahead of time and have been on here for years. And yes, like Adriano, I, I listen to you. You've, you've been here for years since the beginning, really. And Yes, I see you're across the ocean, so it's going to be about reaching out to other hearts and and finding a place to stay, or at the very least, getting your plane ticket lined up. So just prepare, and as soon as you see me on the walk, it's going to be displayed worldwide. As I said, everyone's going to see the first impossibility happen and everyone's going to know it. And as soon as you see that, don't hesitate. Get on the next plane right away and book it for the west side in Canada. As I said, I'm in Canada and obviously that's where the walk starts. It starts from where I am right now. So if you have to book a plane ticket and you're going to wait until you see me on the walk, book it for the west side of Canada. And then, as I said, you might still be quite a distance from where I am, but hitchhike, hitchhike, catch a ride to where I am. There's going to be a lot of vehicles coming up in my direction at first. I can tell you that there's going to be a lot of people who are interested at first. But once they realize what it all means, the majority of those people are going to disappear completely, just like phantoms, because they're not going to like the requirements. They're not going to enjoy hearing that they have to leave their home for good. So they're going to be gone They're the ones who think that they can have it both ways. And obviously that's not the case. You can't have it both ways. You can't come on the total walk and you're going to have to do it totally with me, obviously, and still go home and sleep in your bed every evening. That should just be so obvious, even on a logical level, just absolutely, completely obvious but a lot of these people who are going to drive up to me and maybe some of you will catch a ride hitchhiking with one of them. And then they're going to hear me speak, as I said, speak on the street, on the highway, delivering the revelation and the message of what this place is and what it's going to take to leave it. Many of them aren't even going to like hearing what this place is because they don't believe it's hell. They believe in it. They want to stay. They love it. As soon as they hear that, and that I'm not an outside savior, that's the other thing. I'm not your savior. You're going to have to walk and carry your own cross. And it's going to be a distance as vast as an ocean. 
And it's going to be damn difficult. Damn difficult at best. Damn difficult is not even accurate to describe how difficult it's going to be. There's no words. And so the vast majority that are driving up out of curiosity, out of keen interest, oh my God, oh my God, it's time, we're going to be saved. And then they realize, no, you're not being saved. This is an opportunity to get out of hell. And most people don't believe that they're in hell. And all those ones that have made that journey driving to where I am are going to drive back home and the majority of them are going to eventually get the mark because they're not ready. That's just the fact. There's so much to this and the vision does need to be corrected and there's just so many that are absolutely unwilling to do that. That should be obvious as well to the real hearts. How many attempts with friends, family members, neighbors, strangers even have you made to try and get people to see things that are wrong here? And they just absolutely refuse with every fiber of their being. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to change the vision in themselves whatsoever. And that's the point. And yet they want heaven as well, which is about the perfect vision. And you have free will. Heaven isn't about just manipulating you and treating you like a puppet. And God says, oh, don't worry. I'm just going to correct your vision for you and treat you like a puppet in doing so because obviously that would mean stripping you of your individuality the i am that i am who you are if your true creator did that and just corrected the vision for you then he would be manipulating you he would be treating you as if he was a puppeteer and you're the puppet there's no goodness in that you should take solace in the fact that your true creator doesn't do that and is doing everything, everything to correct the vision in a correct way. So you retain your free will. You retain everything that you actually are. It's all still your choice. That's, that's really important to understand. You need to understand that. And that is good. That's a good thing. The devil is all about being a puppeteer. He would strip you of your free will in less than one second if he had the choice. But he doesn't. The creator does not allow that. That's one thing that can never be touched ever while the vision of the broken heart is being corrected in everyone. And there is a plan. I need to tell everyone that there is a plan to correct the vision. But one must be willing. You have to be willing to correct it inside of yourself. If you're unwilling, like so many of you know and understand... Just for the example that I already gave, many are unbendable in themselves in that way. They are just absolutely rooted in this hell vision and a complete believer in it. And they insist on remaining that way. It's a dead to rights insistence. And they are as unchangeable as hard concrete you can manipulate concrete at first you know when it's still wet just first being poured but after a few hours it's setting up fast and faster and then bam it just flash sets and it's completely hard there's there's no more manipulating that 
And that's most people. They are like concrete, completely set in in their vision and in their methods, in their ways. Another question that's important that's been asked, and the majority of the revelation of this question I had mentioned is going to be revealed on the walk, on the street. They, it will be part of the street revelation, and it's about children. And I know that's so important to so many of you, but it's why I asked quite a few messages and presentations ago what are you willing to go through hell for i didn't just ask that for no reason this is the reason because you're going to be walking through hell that's the point to get to heaven one must walk through hell and If you have children, what are you willing to do for them? You're going to have to carry your own cross, and that includes your children. So if they are struggling to walk very far at all, you're going to have to carry them. They're your cross. That's what you took on. That's your responsibility. What are you willing to do for them? You say you love your children. Are you willing to carry them? If you're unwilling to carry them, don't talk to me about love. Just don't. Don't bring that here. You're going to say, somebody else carry them for me. My goodness. You're not willing to go through hell for them. Not at all. Don't pretend like you are. Then it's just some talk. You're going to have to walk it. If you have two, two kids, two children, three, pile them on your back if you have to. Literally crawl. I'm not even joking. It's the cross. You brought children into hell. Do you get it? This is hell, and you've brought children here. Because at one point you thought it was a good idea. This is a great place. I need to bring children here. That's the fact. Or maybe it happened some other way. I'm not going to judge that. I'm not judging the reasons why you brought your children here. I'm not the judge on that. At all. I'm telling you the truth of what's going to be necessary If you love your children that much and you want them to get out of hell, and yes, the opportunity will be theirs as well to get out. But you're going to have to demonstrate it. And another thing too I want to mention about that is I will be last on the walk. I will be at the back. Last, as I mentioned Always be last in case anyone falls down. And I will be there to pick you up if you fall. I will help anyone who is struggling. But the one thing that you can't do is give up. If you give up, then you are done. And this is exactly why I said the heart never gives up. And the heart is the kingdom of heaven. If you want the kingdom of heaven, you cannot give up. You might fall a hundred times every day, a thousand times every day. I will be there to pick up everyone who falls every single time that they fall. But if you say, I give up, I can't do this, then I'm sorry. Then you've given up. You've given up on the heart. And I can't carry you. I can't carry your cross. Is it being understood now why I am not a savior? This is not about any outside saviors being the truth. Because there never will be an outside savior that is the truth. This is about an opportunity and you're going to have to walk it and carry yourself. And your cross, which means if you have children 
and they can't walk the whole day, you're going to have to be ready to carry them. To carry them too. You say you love your children so much. Get them out of hell. Carry them out. What are you willing to do? You say you love. You're going to have to prove it. It can't just be empty talk. It has to be real. I hope I'm reaching the real hearts that are getting how serious this is. This is not a fucking joke. This is not kindergarten nap time. Holy shit. To get out of hell, you got to walk through hell. And carrying your cross is not just going to be some abstract symbol. It's going to be real. You've brought other crosses into this hell system by having children. Do you get it? Please, see with your heart. I am begging you to get it. I'm not angry at you. I'm passionate for you to wake up. That's what this is. I'm passionate. Wake up. See how serious it is. And if you're unwilling to do that, or you fall down a few times and just give up, you just say, no, I'm done. I give up. This might sound harsh, but I am going to have to leave you exactly where you are. On that walk. That's the truth. Do you get also why I'm no outside savior? I'm not going to be able to walk you home. To your mortgage home. Or to another gas station for you to try to find someone to give you a ride somewhere. I'm giving you the plain, straight-up fact, the reality of how harsh this situation is and how serious the walk will not stop, will not be deterred or detoured for anyone who gives up. That's why I've said it over and over again. The heart never gives up, ever. Ever. You might have nothing left to give. If you drain your tank, I'm going to say this, and this is, this is a harsh truth as well. If you drain your tank and you fall down and I go to pick you up and you're dead, you've done everything. You did. You You spent everything. You were all in. And our true creators, our true father and true mother, see that. And the kingdom of heaven is still yours. You are not going to go into hell's system just because you die on the walk because you completely spent yourself. And I'm going to be doing my utmost to make sure that that doesn't happen, but it very well might. That is the fact. That's how difficult this walk is going to be. But being all in means that you very well might be completely and utterly spent. No more gas in in your own personal tank at all. The kingdom will be yours. Completely, you will be granted access into heaven because you were all in and you never gave up. You were a true heart. I need to express that right now. And of course, the defenders of hell are going to hate that. They're going to mock it. They're going to say, 
I'm evil or I'm a bad man. Everyone should get access to heaven. If our true creators were kind, they would just let everyone in. Really conceptualize that. If everyone with the incorrect vision was given access to heaven, it would become hell. Just like this place, you're being shown as well and told this is what the wrong vision is. It becomes hell. That's why it's about correcting the vision. And it's a totality. Nothing in heaven is done half-assed. There's no half visions. The vision is total, it's complete, and it's perfect. I really hope all of this is being comprehended and the reasons why the demonstration as well is so necessary. You can't just say, I'm all in for the heart and stay on your couch for the next two years or three years. And then everything goes dark. And then you think that heaven's still mine. I said, I'm all in. I know I stayed on my couch, but I meant it when I said it. Well, that's not how it's going to work at all. You didn't prove anything. You just talked a big game. But when it came time for the action, you didn't do anything. So that's in reference to the ones who won't do anything, not the ones who are real and are going to do everything. I know that there are some of you out there, or many, I hope many. Obviously I do. The more the better, because it's about getting out of hell, and I want as many of you as possible to get out. This opportunity is so rare. You need to understand that. This is such a rarity. It's beyond explanation how rare. I'll say that. But there's no outside savior. I am not an outside savior. I've made that so clear many, many times on this channel over the years. And this is the reveal as to why. So please, I reiterate and I beg and plead again. Find one another. Get in contact with each other. If you're real hearts, you're going to want to get to know one another. The heart is about healing. It's about being together. Just like in a band. The kingdom of heaven isn't about a one-man band. Isolated in some corner, trying to play 15 instruments at the same time, just by yourself. That's just ridiculous. Think of it like a family band. Everyone has their part. And it's beautiful. You're making music together. It's wonderful. And heaven is perfectly free. As free as free gets. And more beautiful than can be imagined. No words. No words can ever touch or describe it at all. No poetry comes even close. But yes, heaven is heaven. But it doesn't grant entry to literally everyone. That's what this hell system does. It says everyone's welcome. It's like a shit show party. And it keeps sending invites. Invite everyone. Who cares? It's a riot in here. Woo! It doesn't care about what your vision is. If you're a clown retard. All are welcome. Of course it welcomes everyone because it's a shit show. 
I hope that's being understood. And heaven is not a shit show. Obviously, that should be comprehended by now. I'm going to sign off at that. I hope my intensity is being understood. It's not judging all of you real hearts at all. It's not being angry at you. I'm not angry in the slightest at the real hearts whatsoever. I just want you to fully awaken and fully see from your heart. And I'm going to do my utmost. The house is on fire. You don't remain calm. You don't remain quiet when the house is on fire and you see that some people are still sleeping or that evil is lulling them back to sleep. Just saying, oh, just just meditate. Don't worry. It's not that bad of a fire. It'll probably go out on its own anyways. Just enjoy your dream state. And so, yeah, I'm going to yell. I'm going to yell so that you don't listen to that garbage. The defenders of hell saying to just do some more yoga and stand on your head while everything is burning all around you and you're the next one to be burned in it. I am not going to do that and I'm not going to apologize for being passionate and intense about it. And with each post, each message, it should be more and more obvious who those defenders of evil are. Some of you, I see you have commented, and you are noticing. You are seeing it, and that's good. I just needed to point it out at first, but your eyes are opening to that. Your heart is opening to that. You're seeing that it's not just a possibility, it's happening. It's all around you. The tells, as I've said before, are many of you seeing the tells in everything. I believe more and more of you are. I do everything I am doing out of the love in my heart. Everything. And I'm going to do my damnedest. My damnedest. I'm giving everything. Everything. Nothing is going to be held back. Nothing. I will never apologize for my passion. Ever. The zombies. They want you to feel terrible for your passion. All the years that you've been here just tearing you down any time that you had passion, always telling you to just calm down, be grounded. You see, just stay in the ground. Yeah, stay close to the grave. That's that's what they want all the time. Keep it close to the grave. Act like an elderly person would, no matter what age you are, just calm, calm. Talk like a Buddhist monk or some guru. Just monotone. See, that's why I also change my tone. It's not monotone. One tone. Uh, Just like a like a monk just om oh, my goodness i will never ever be that if people think that's that's the way wow again you're listening to a zombie that's what a zombie sounds like uh, om oh, uh, om oh, Just completely monotone. Only one tone. 
Do you think the music of heaven is monotone? I'll let you figure that one out on your own this evening. I'm signing out for now. You'll hear from me tomorrow. As I said, it's about showing up in a war. You have to show up every day, every moment. In a war, there's no sleep. And that's what this war to come is going to be. It's going to be so intense, there's not going to be a moment of time for any kind of sleep. I mean that. Zero sleep from anyone. You're going to be on edge nonstop. I'm going to get into that more. We need to talk about it more. All of this needs to be drilled home into into your heart to prepare, to prepare yourself inwardly as well for the intensity of everything. That's, that's the other side of the preparation. Yes, there's the prepper side with the supplies. I'll get more clear tomorrow on everything that's going to be needed. And yes, you're going to need a plan and there's going to be some specifics that you're going to need to prepare for. And I'll get into those specifics tomorrow. I hope everyone is doing okay out there. I always mean that. Please be safe. You'll hear from me tomorrow. Talk to you then.